treat with some good old southern hospitality. Tammy Wynette is here. Great good to morning. see you. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. And you're looking very happy because you've well, got some great you. family news. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Very exciting. I have new twin grandsons, three days old. Congratulations. Yes. That's fantastic. How many grandchildren have you got then? Uh, I have six. Six grandchildren. Mm -hmm. That's Four quite girls an achievement. And two boys. <laughs> and 35 number ones. Yes. <laughs> And still working flat out still and doing working. a tour of Britain right now. Yeah, it's lovely to see you in Britain. You love um, this time of oh, year, I don't do. you? Oh, I do. I love this time of year and I love, I love Britain. I've been coming over since 1966 and I love it. Yeah, well, we've already been flooded with calls from people who like to see you in Britain <laughs> oh, at this great. time of year because uh, Tammy's going to be doing a tour of the whole country, really, taking in just about everywhere. And I think an awful lot of people who watch Good Morning are going to be uh, coming to your tour. I hope so. And wanting to speak to you on the phone if they get the chance. So if you would like to speak to Tammy, she'll be able to take some calls. 021 609 9000 is the number to ring if you want to have a chat with Tammy. But first, she's here with us today, the worldwide queen of country music. Music, Tammy Wynette. Let's hear her singing the most famous country song ever and her biggest hit. <sighs> People quite like that song, don't they, really, Tammy? It's been a great song for me. I really can't complain about anything about that song. It's been wonderful. I've defended that song for 25 years. I, I really got in trouble at home with women's lib. I didn't mean to. I didn't know I was writing anything that anybody would object to, but it's been wonderful for well, Why did you write years. it in the first place, that one? Beg your pardon? Why did you write that one in particular? Well, the main reason that Billy and I wrote the song was we had two songs to record that day and we needed three. And we couldn't think of anything, that old songs that we wanted to do. So we went to his office and gave the musicians a 20 minute break and we wrote the song. And, uh, in 20 minutes? Yeah. One of the most sure successful that. songs ever in the whole world. And there, there have been other songs that I have struggled with, you know, for days and weeks trying to finish and that one came so easily. Is it because it's an emotion you believe in? Yes. I think so, definitely. That's the way I was born and raised. A, a man's word was God, where I came from. You know, if I asked Mama to do something, it was always ask your daddy. You know, so stand by your man came very natural to me. Hil Hillary Clinton took your name in vain over that <laughs> one, didn't she? Not so long ago. Well, she did, uh, and I, I talked to her after that. She called and apologized, and I talked to her, and she said that she was just answering questions so fast that she wasn't really realizing what she had said. Yeah, and this was at the time when she was defending her husband's reputation. Right. And I told her, I said, well, I thought that's what you were doing, standing by your man, you know, so it, it's all okay now. Oh, you, you've forgiven her? Oh, yes. Do you, do you ever get fed up with singing it? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I get tired of singing it. I'd be lying if I didn't say that, because after 25 years, you know, anything gets old or boring. I just try, try to find new ways to do it and something to make it more exciting. Yes, but I mean, it would everyone be... who sees you or hears your name, they immediately think of Stand By Your Man. If I, people say, who have you got on the show today? They say, Tammy Widow. They go, Stand <laughs> By Your Man. <laughs> you know, it's, it's unbelievable. The whole it's building. It's embarrassing. Yeah, the whole household is singing Stand By Your Man. Well, today. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you couldn't go do a concert without it because everybody no. would be disappointed, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Or D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Yeah, I, I always have to do it, yes. Actually, that one, the, the spelling one, um, again, is that because that came from the heart? Is it something that you've had to do, talk about your D-I-V-O-R-C-E in front of the children? Oh, yes. Uh, it did come from the heart. I didn't write uh, D-I-V-O-R-C-E, but I should have. Yes. It should have been mine. <laughs> I mean, after your first marriage, when you went away and, and wanted to um, sort of get into the singing world and, and make a break, what, what did your husband say just as you were leaving? Something like... Oh, dream on, baby, dream, dream on. on. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I got revenge, mental revenge, really. I, I'm not a uh, vengeful person, but uh, I worked at Birmingham, Alabama, <laughs> 10 years after I had left and after he had said, dream on, baby. And I saw him in, standing uh, in the queue to to come up for an autograph and, and he laughed well, and said... after a concert was this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He laughed and said, I'd like your autograph. And I said, well, you have it. You already have it. And he said, well, I'd like it again. So it was the perfect opportunity. I signed the paper, dream on, baby, dream on, love, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> one, one um, uh, well, a number of great memories from that time are your three daughters. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Tina because she must be very special because of what she survived. She is very special. Tina was born very premature and she weighed a pound and a half and was 11 inches long. That is and, astonishing. Uh, so, a pound and a half. And didn't she lose a bit of weight as well after she being She did. Born? She lost weight and she was in an incubator for three months and then I took her home, had her home for two weeks and she had spinal meningitis back in the hospital for nine weeks. But she's very healthy now and very pregnant. She's expecting her first child in March. And she's how old? She's 28. So more congratulations in store. Thank you. How yes. important to you is your family? Oh, very important. My, my family is, is my life. Uh, I love my career, but my career comes second. Now, my career came first. 
when my children were small. And it I'm did. sorry that it did, mm. yes. But I had to. It was the only way I had of Well, you were burning, care weren't you? You were burning to be a singer. I Even just though had everybody to. was telling you, dream on. They, I mean, they really thought it was just a dream. Yeah. Uh, I never really thought that I could do anything to be successful with singing, but it was something that I just wanted to do for my own self-satisfaction. So when, when you upped and left home the first time with the three children, you went to Nashville, that was because you wanted to be a singer in Nashville. Mm -hmm. How yes. difficult was it, though, looking after three children at the oh, same time? Oh, it was time? very difficult. I took the children with me every time I would go to a publishing office or to uh, a company, CBS or uh, Epic Records, any of those, I would take the kids along with me. And the producer that uh, is responsible for my success and for letting me get a start in music would let me bring the children and I would fold an old-fashioned quilt and set it down on the floor and the, girl, the three girls would sit on that as I recorded and they never were any bother, any trouble. You know, it was just hard taking care of them and working too. But that comes from the sort of sheer grittiness of your upbringing in a way. Well, I think I come from good stock. I'm, <laughs> I'm a strong person. Tammy, we'll chat again later. Thanks okay. very much indeed. And here she is, sitting by our far side. Good to see you. That, so that, that must be very exciting for you to work with uh, Dolly Parton because she's an old friend, right? She is an old friend. She's a dear friend. So is Loretta. And it was a thrill for me to be able to do this because mm. I had wanted for a long time to record with Dolly and also with Loretta. And we all came to town within three or four years of each other and started in the business about the same time. So we had an awful lot of fun. It wasn't really like working with another artist. It was like working with girlfriends. And this is Nashville you're talking yes, about. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why is Nashville the center of it all? Why, why did Nashville become such a big country? I really don't know other than for the Grand Ole Opry. When the Grand Ole Opry started mm -hmm. in Nashville, so many artists started, people started coming to Nashville in hopes of being on the Grand Ole Opry. And I mm -hmm. think that's what started country music so big there. And you're also bringing out an album soon, aren't you, called Duets, with various people like Cliff Richard, Elton John? I am. I recorded with Cliff here uh, in uh, England and went to Atlanta and recorded with Elton. And it was a song that he wrote, and it's wonderful. And I love the thing that I did with Cliff also. I'll also be recording with Smokey Robinson, Aaron Neville, Lyle Lovett, and Melissa Etheridge when I get back home. And what brought this on? Why, why did you do that? Well, I had been with uh, Sony, CBS, at the time for 25 years. and. They called me in for a meeting, and I told my husband when I left, I said, well, this will probably be the day when they'll cancel my contract. And I got there, and they asked if there was anything that I had not done in the 25 years that I had been with them that I wanted to do. And I told them that I would love to record with some artists that weren't country artists that were in different fields of music. And they gave me the green light to do it. So, so are they country songs? Or? No, no, they're not really country songs. They're more contemporary, more, more pop. But... And it's not that I'm trying to go to any other uh, field of music because I love country and that's all that I ever think that I am. But I wanted them to be comfortable with what they were doing and I would just kind of fit in the best that I could. must seem an awfully long time since you were going out in the fields age nine before dawn to pick the <sighs> cotton and Gosh. milk the cows. And well, it does seem like a long time, but not long enough. <laughs> <laughs> you hated it. Then. I hated it. Oh, we we I heard you it. talking about um, how you used to go out and pick the cotton and, the, and the, the, the line of cotton that you had to, you had to be picking before the end of the day was too long to see the end of. Oh, you couldn't see the end of the rows at all. And you would bend over and pull the cotton from the bowls for as long as you could. Then you'd get down on your knees and you'd crawl and you'd have to wear a straw hat, uh, Levi's, and it was terrible. And the bowls would just tear your fingers up. Is that what it's gave you the determination job. to find a new life? Well, my mother always said it was determination. I told her it was stupidity and ignorance. I didn't know any better. I thought I could do it, so I just took off and tried. But I didn't like the farm. I hated it. Oh. I'm glad now I was raised that way because I think it's made me have better values uh, as a uh, grown-up. Yeah. <laughs> now, we have a caller here called Karen King from Middlesbrough. She says, can Tammy please say hello to me? I'm a huge fan of hers. I'm going to a concert in Sunderland for my 20th birthday treat. I look forward to seeing her there. So that's Karen King. you say hello to Karen? Yes. Hi, Karen. I hope you enjoy the show, and it's great to have someone your age come into my show. Thanks. Actually, we've got a Tammy Wynette fan on the line as well, I understand. Is that right? Is there uh, anyone who have on the we line? got on the line? Hello? No, we haven't got anyone on the line. No. Oh, well, <laughs> it was worth a try. Yeah, it Can was. Can we just check? There's no one on the line. Hello? Oh, hello. Hello. Ah. Hi. Hi. Uh, Who's Ollie. that? It's Karina. Hello, hello. Karina. Hi. Hi. You're through to Tammy Wynette. You're a big fan of hers, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been singing for years in school choirs and things, doing solos. And um, I've, been, I've been to a few karaoke's and I always sing Stand By Your Man <laughs> and I've always won. 
Hey, Karina. Yeah. You don't fancy giving us a little touch of it now, do you? <laughs> we won't. We won't tell anyone. We just mm. like to hear how good you are. Okay. Um. Sometimes it's hard to be a woman. You know your love to just one man. You had the bad times and you have good times doing things that you don't understand. Okay. Karina, <laughs> terrific. Yeah, yeah, very good. good. Good thing she wasn't around when you started out, Tammy. Oh, I'm yeah. glad she wasn't. <laughs> I might not have had stand by your man. It's, it's a wonderful brave. song, isn't it, Karina? Pardon? It's a wonderful song. Yeah, I love it. You're obviously the star of all the karaoke nights in yeah. your area. Thank you, Karina. Okay. Thank you, Karina. It's lovely to um, Could you say hi to all my friends? Because they all know me. Just say hi to everyone. They're all watching. Hi, hi everybody. Hi, friends. Friends. <laughs> Thank Thank you, Karina. Karina. I think there's someone else on the line. Is that Sylvia? Hello, yeah. Hi, Sylvia. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Chesterfield. Hello, Sylvia. What would you like to say to Tammy? I'd just like to say to Tammy that I've been a, a fan of hers since I was a teenager, and I have got a 16 year old son now. And I took him along when he was nine years old to see her in Sheffield. And he absolutely adores her. And he sang word perfect every song. Oh. He's listened to her since he's been in my womb. Oh, that's brilliant. And we'd, like to, we'd like to know whereabouts in England she's going to be because uh, oh, we're that's... there every time. Every time she's got a concert, we're there. You're not well, going I tell to you everyone. what, our, our hotliners have a full list of where uh, Tammy's going to be. Yeah, so stay on the line and they'll talk to you and tell you. But okay. she's going to be all over. The, all over. Actually, that's the one great thing about um, Thanks, country Sylvia. music, isn't it? Is it appeals to all generations. It does. I mean, because it's, it's such good tunes, aren't it they? It does. It's just, it's very simple tunes. People ask us why we sing about sad things. It's not really sad things. It's everyday things that happen in your life. It's and family things, mm -hmm. actually, isn't it? It is. And it just has mass appeal because so many people can identify with it. Do you find that when you, um, when you do your concerts in Britain as well, that you get everybody, all age groups there? We get all age groups and I think they're more enthusiastic here than at home because they don't get as much as what we have at home. We're kind of over, overly saturated at home at times. So are you still doing your soap opera? No, no, I'm not doing that anymore. That was a, a great experience for me, but it was very time consuming. And I'm not a day person, I'm a night person. I've been used to that for so many years. Mm. And I would have to get up at 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning to be on the set, and it was so different. But it was a great experience. What, well, you were a waitress, weren't you? I was a waitress. My name was Darlene Stenkowski. <laughs> <laughs> and do you still find time to actually get in the kitchen and do the cooking oh, yourself? Oh, yes, uh -huh. I sure do. I started cooking to keep from going to the cotton fields, to keep from having to pick cotton. Any excuse? Any, any excuse. And, uh, oh, I experimented. I cooked cornbread one day and put green cake dye in it. And my father would eat it. He said, I know there's nothing wrong with it, but it looks poison, so I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> I did everything. I tried a little bit of anything, you know, to stay out of the fields. I think Finally, we've got to leave it there. Yes, we've got to go to the kitchen. Michelle Pryor from Reading says, could Tammy please say hello to my mum, Janet Frankham, as she's Tammy's number Hi, one Janet. fan in Reading, that is. So that's it, yeah, Janet. Yeah, and then okay, Tammy's going to be joining us in the kitchen, so we're actually making her stand by her words. Yeah. <laughs> Take with her when she Hi, comes. Hi, Hi. How are you? <laughs> Lovely to see you. Good to see you. Um, we have to make some allowances sometimes with some American recipes because sometimes you can't always get the things, you know, right? right? So what we've done with the cornmeal here, now this is yellow cornmeal. This is a little bit finer than I would normally mm -hmm. have, um, and usually it's more granular than that. Yes. Do you find so? Yes, it's, it's coarser than that. Right. Now, to make itself rising, to a cup of cornmeal, we added um, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, mix that in. Now again, one uses one's fingers because it's quicker. See, and that's the country way of doing of it anyway, it with the fingers. Of course it is. They don't have any forks and all that thing, do they? I mean, they use skillets instead of frying pans. Yes, that's right, they're skillets. Oh, that's a skillet. Now these just fry until they're browned on both sides. And this is why you need really, don't you, firm, really firm tomatoes, yes. otherwise they go too soft. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of my favourite things. Is it? Uh -huh. I love it. Well, I'm sorry we couldn't get real green. Now, we're actually cooking this in oil. Um, what would you cook it in yourself? I would oil? cook it in oil. Yeah, uh -huh. but a non-flavoured oil. Yes. Well, they've actually given us today a, a light olive oil, which I think may change the flavour a bit too much, mm -hmm. because you don't really want the flavour of the oil to come through, do you? You want the flavour no, of the tomatoes. No, the, yes, the flavour of the tomatoes. Now, I haven't put, and didn't put, and I hope you don't mind, because we never used to do this because of people on diets here, and they've all got this thing about salt and whatever. Oh, no salt. Right. <laughs> so I didn't put any salt into the chicken pieces for the simple reason that... 
the parmesan cheese is always slightly salty. And anyway, you can always add salt and pepper at the end. Mm -hmm. Now, watch. Do you know my favourite uh, southern southern fried chicken? Oh, southern fried chicken. I love. I love. But fried there's chicken. a contentious bit about that as to what you actually use to fry it in. What we used to yes. fry it in. Yes. Uh, uh, well, we call it lard. Yes. We fry it in in lard or, or just cooking oil. Right. And well, we roll it in we, flour. What we used to do was save it up, would you believe? I'll get it from a baker and fry it in bacon Bacon and grease. Yes. 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 And I tell you what, darling, you can see I really enjoy it. He's <laughs> <laughs> doing, doing a good too. job. He's doing an excellent <laughs> job. He sure is. <laughs> but it's really nice. You can turn them out. Now, mind your, mind your dress because I don't want you to... They are very green, aren't they? But that well, is important. Green. Green. No, they are. Oh, yeah. I know. If we wanted red we tomato, fried tomato, if we were bought red ones. We would normally be a bit sort of. Do you know, it was, harder that, to buy, it was harder to buy green ones than it was to buy red ones. I was, yeah. shocked. Yeah. I was yeah. shocked that you had the green tomatoes because uh, at home I can't get them anymore. Of course, they're tomatoes, aren't yes. they? That was the main thing. Yes. 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 We got we asked Tammy, tomatoes. Call from Colin Hart of Luton, and they've got a lot of taste in Luton. It's a very tasteful town. Yeah. Colin says he's Tammy's greatest fan. He's 110 albums, 20 CDs, 65 singles, which he paid £300 for. Seen her so many times he's lost count. Got purpose built box to carry the LPs, and it takes two people to carry it. He sends his love. Oh, they are. Colin? That is a fan. Oh, Colin, Colin Hart. Your cookbook. He didn't say he got a cookbook, did he? No, he didn't. No, he hasn't got the cookbook. The southern cookbook. Also, Diana Cooper from Canterbury says, My husband are such big fans of Tammy, we named our four year old Labrador after her. <laughs> <laughs> is that a compliment or not? Of course it's a compliment. Yeah, it is. It's a compliment. What else? It's a compliment. compliment. We're a bit worried about what she said to that one, weren't we? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, you were. That's, That's a compliment. compliment. Keep frying the tomatoes, yep. please. Yes. Penny Clayton from Garston near Watford says, Please, 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 can you say hello to our grandson, Simon Lowe, who is four today? He'll be tucking into his Mr. Blobby cake at about two o'clock at his birthday party. Mm -hmm. Make his day if you could send him lots of love from Nan and Grandad. Clayton. So, happy birthday, Simon. I hope have you enjoy day, your Simon. Mr. Blobby cake. Yeah. Right, it's time for a little romance again, you know, because the last instalment's coming up of Gone Fishing. Oh. Can we have a shot, too? Can we have a shot? Good. Mm, yes. Can we see, can we see <laughs> David, oh, please? Yeah, David. Romance yeah, going it's on important. Here, so yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now, right. now, yesterday, Daniela really hit it off with Michael. Yeah, actually. Very much. Well, anyway, look, I think we ought to moment, introduce it, everybody around the table. Don't you? Yes. yes. Well, Tanya Hello. is here, yes. and Tammy Tanya. is here, and Tammy's husband, a manager, George Ritchie. Good to see you, George. And you. Hello. Thank you very much. So, and the reason we're all sitting around the table is because we've been cooking all morning from Tammy's book. And I think David Hudson Halls ought to come in now and let's see right. how we're doing. Because this is all southern food. It smells southern lovely. Food. Oh my goodness. Oh, it wow. I think it tastes okay. David, oh, it looks wonderful. David, it looks wonderful. <laughs> da David, a special message for you. Mrs. Malcolm from Olden, among many others, I may say, has rung in to say, I'd like to tell David that it's great to have him back on television That's again. That's very kind. Thank you. Let's hope there's many more of them. Yeah. <laughs> Any further decision will come after we've tasted the food, David. Yeah. Is that okay? Not my recipe, <laughs> 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 It'll be great. It's Tammy's yeah. fault, but can you explain briefly what we are, what, what we've got there? Well, there's the pumpkin bread, which yeah. I didn't make actually, somebody else did. And um, that's not the pumpkin bread. This is the. Fish no, that's the tomato. Oh, right. uh, Those are the tomatoes. I've got, that I've got Tammy got was... Oh, I see what you mean. They're yeah. the tomatoes, yes. green fried tomatoes. Yeah. And that's the chicken, which has got the cheese. The crackers and what also those lumps the, uh, on the chicken, those bits. Yeah. The bits are the crackers. Tell me, pardon cheese. my partner. He isn't very culinary. <laughs> and also, and he hates onions, by the way. And um, it's got lovely onion in it, crispy onion bits. So we thought we'd do extra for you. <laughs> <laughs> and what else have we got? We've got the and rice. And they just did some yellow here. rice and broccoli at the end there. Which is quite George, nice. is she a good cook? Tammy? Yeah. Oh, she's a wonderful cook. And does she really still cook? Yes, she does. You, oh, good, good. She certainly does. She's really wonderful. I learned to cook from Tammy. Yeah, he's, he's very good. He cooks wonderful. He cooks for me a lot when we travel on the road. Mm -hmm. If I have two shows, one in the afternoon and one at night, he will cook a complete meal for me. Because that's the big problem afterwards. I know when a lot of big stars are on tour is that they have to, you have to eat junk food all the time mm -hmm. because you're never in anywhere for more than five minutes. No. Do you know today we're missing... The fat back and the grits. Yeah. I know, I know. The what? Know. The what? Are you talking <laughs> about? Will you be mother, please? Will you be mother? I think we ought to have a go at this. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. I can't. Also, I'm so how, how, you get, how do you get on? Because one of the holidays coming up for you, which is the greatest, is Thanksgiving. Yes, and I always cook Thanksgiving dinner for for my husband and the whole crew, everybody that travels with us. I'll be cooking 
for about 50 people Thanksgiving. So I'll, I'll cook it just in my do, way. Do I'm trying to be... or do uh, where, where you're staying give you the opportunity? Sure. They, they let me work in the kitchen where, where we're staying. Great. So They're just chatting I away I just scrub happily. up real good. And you just <laughs> chat happily away down there. We're getting on with the business. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Rather a long time since I've done this. Yeah. Yeah. Service, service. 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 Last time she did it was little <laughs> chef, but I mean we didn't. <laughs> 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 well, I recognise you, by the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How about a green tomato? We're, we're going to have to say goodbye now. Thank Thanks you. again to George Thank and Tammy. You. It's been great to see you and David Thank and Tanya. Could we just give you?